Alright, with any luck, I will undertake some uh, eukaryotic cell division now. So first I drew a big, um, big kind of like pie looking chart, like the one he drew. Um, this, this chart is meant to show you the whole picture of um, what goes on in eukaryotic cell division. So you start up here, logically enough, with the Roman numeral 1. That's the interphase. The interphase um, is, is roughly divided into three, three sub-stages. The first one is G1, which just stands for um, like cell growth stage 1. Um, then S is actually where the DNA is duplicated. And then G2 is, uh, is a second cell growth phase. And that's it for the interphase. It's relatively simple. Um, I think that's really all we said about, about the interphase. Um, we spent a lot more time on, on the uh, mitotic phase, or, or mitotic stage, which is abbreviated just M stage, M for mitotic. Um, the mitotic stage, as you can see here, is, is developed into four kind of like sub sub uh, sub stages. There, the first one's the prophase, second one's the metaphase, next one's the anaphase, and last one's telophase. Really quickly about how to remember the stages. Um, the the last one, telophase. Um, we 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 use the word in English tele to mean um, like in, in words like telephone, but in in the word in in Greek tele or telos means the end or final stage. So you can think of that being the last stage of, of the mitotic stage because, um, or last phase of the mitotic stage because telos means last or end, so it makes sense to be the last of the four. Um, all right, now for what goes on um, in, in, in the stage, well, mitotic, like we already agreed that the, the stage as a whole, all four steps, that's the mitotic stage. Well, mitosis just means nuclear division. So the M stage will roughly cover like, all the events surrounding um, nuclear division and what's necessary for it to happen. Um, all right, so when if if you see a cell in interphase, like looking under a microscope, you'll you'll see a cell that has a nucleus that's roughly intact. Maybe it looks like the DNA is starting to spread all over the uh, nucleus, but still the nucleus will be more or less intact. But the first of the four stages, as we agreed um, a second ago, was the prophase. So. If you look here, you can see a dotted line in the form of a circle. That dotted line is actually the nuclear envelope beginning to break down. And you'll see, um, you'll see individual chromosomes, if, if you look under the microscope, if you look closely enough. And also, you'll see that the centrioles have already started to uh, split apart and move to the opposite ends of the cell. And as a result of that, um, like you can see the microtubules um, start starting to also like connect to chromosomes in there. Um, I, I don't know and I don't want to misrepresent anything. I don't know if they've actually connected to chromosomes and they're pulling at this point or if they're just still kind of forming up. But anyway, all, all that's beginning. Um, yeah, so so a clear a clear like indication of a cell in prophase would be the, the nuclear membranes beginning to break down and the centrioles are moving apart. Um, and, and also they divide into two during the, in the, the prostate, the centrioles do, I mean. Um, all right, now, in the metaphase, the, uh, the microtubules here that, that have become spindle fibers become very important. Um, first of all, there are two types. This, this type here, the green, that's called kinetochrome. If you're wondering how to remember that name, just remember that kinesis means movement, like, like kinetic and all those words that we get. Kinetic energy means energy of moving, that kind of thing. And then the other ones, the ones that are in um, black here, are called the polar microtubules. All right, so as you can see, like the uh, the chromosomes there are in the middle of each spindle fiber, and they're they're kind of um, attached there too. Um, actually, really quick. Oh yeah, I drew it down here. Really quickly, um, the an enlargement of the chromosomes that you see attached here would be this guy right here. Um, the black. Let me see if I can move it correctly. The black um, dot there would be the centromere, and then the chromatids would be this one uh, here, and then that one up here as well. well that'll be clearer in a, in a second when we get to the anaphase. Um, so anyway, what, what happens in this stage is roughly just that um, the chromosomes get arranged to the middle of the, of the spindle fibers. The centrioles separate all the way to the ends of the cell. Um, polar microtubules and... Um, kinetochrome tubules are, are both visible and um, yeah all the chromosomes are aligned with the equator of the cell um, alright now moving on to anaphase which we see here um, there we go you can see that um, 
Let's see. All right, so first of all, the the polar microtubules here have become much, much longer in anaphase, and the kinetochrome microtubules have become very, very short. Now, that's when the, the meaning of the word kinetochrome becomes obvious. So chrome probably stands for chromosome, and kineto stands for moving. So what that's saying is the kinetochrome is pulling the chromosome, hence the name, to uh, closer to the centrioles. And, and this whole time, the, the polar microtubules are getting longer and longer. So, um, oh, also notice the orientation of this. Um, Dr. Said is pretty specific that the microtubule here is connecting actually to the centromere, which we said was the center part of the, of the um, chromosome connecting the two chromatids. And you can see that the chromatid is actually oriented the opposite of the way you think it would be because um, in, in the last picture it was a bit of an X, but now the X is kind of facing away from each other, so you can see which direction it's being pulled from that. Um, let's see, what other interesting information is there? Uh, yeah, so in anaphase, just as I said, the sister chromatids um, are separated um, because the, micro the kinetochrome microtubules get shorter and polar microtubules get longer. Um, the chromatids are carried by the centromere to the opposite sides of the cell. And, yeah, th I mean, the entire, like, characteristic of the anaphase is just that it's, it's characterized by a separation of the chromatids. Okay, that brings us to uh, the last stage, which is telophase. So, you know, tele, tele means final or last, as I said, so it'd be the, it's the last part of the um, M phase. As you can see, here we have the nuclear membrane, or rather, a new nuclear membrane reforming around the chromosomes. So, kind of the opposite of what happened in the prophase, where, where this nuclear membrane was breaking up, at this point it's actually being reformed in the telophase. Um, and, and you see these kind of, like, you wouldn't expect these guys normally just expect it to be a circle, but you see these little, um, I don't know, like, dimples or whatever you want to call them in the cytoplasm. Those are called cleavage furrows. You can remember the word furrow because, like, I don't know, a fur, like, when you furrow your brow, it kind of makes little valley-looking things. This is kind of like that valley. That's why they're called cleavage furrows. Um, and when you see those cleavage furrows, it, it's, a, it's a good sign that you're either, um, either dividing really quickly and you're still in anaphase or or you're actually in telophase. Um, now the reason why these cleavage furrows form is because actually the cell is going to divide into two um, and that's called cytokinesis. In, in other words, in order to divide into two it has to start somewhere so it just starts kind of pulling the middle in more and more until it's two separate cells. Um, I didn't draw out the two separate cells because you know what one cell looks like so you can just draw two of them. Um, once the cell divides back into two then what you have is two um, what are called daughter cells which are both, you know, more or less identical to the mother cell, um, genetically anyway, they'll be smaller, of course, and those daughter cells are in the interphase again. Now, one interesting thing is, you might notice here how each of those cells gets one chromatid. Well, that's why in S stage, when you duplicate um, DNA, that's, like, that's where you get the second one of those. So, so you may think that, like, because, because one diploid cell makes two, um, Let's see, oh, let me check that real quick, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, you have 46 chromosomes, and it, whereas, in fact, there are only 23. So, you know, each cell gets one of those chromosomes, but there are two of them. So one diploid cell makes two diploid cells because of what happens in the S stage in um, the interphase. But, um, but it's interesting to note that at the point, like, during the, during the interphase and telophase, actually only one chromatid from each chromosome is being pulled each direction. Um, and that all, the, the second one will actually be made by the daughter cells after, during um, during the S phase, so that it can then divide again if it needs to. Um, yes, and that's, and that's why the 46 chromosomes we talked about are really chromatids. Okay, so other important things to cover. Yeah, I think that's about it for, um, for what I have for eukaryotic cell division. Um, one thing, obviously, to notice is that it's much, much more complex than prokaryotic cell division, which is what we'd expect because eukaryotic cells are more, um, more, more complex. If you have any questions, please just post them um, right down here in the, in the comment section of the video. You may have to make an account to do that. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye-bye.